Bet you thought you'd seen the last of me, eh? No such luck. <laughs> Let's go! Hello wonderful humans of the internet, how are we? My name is Sam Scott Thorne and I am a vocal coach based in Glasgow. Now if you'd like to meet and explore your voice a little more, you can find me on sstvocals.com. You can also find me on Patreon and various other social media platforms and I'll put the handles down below and over there, over there. Quite predictable, but it works, so that's fine. Now if you'd like to consider becoming a patron, you have access to things like early release of reactions, you can fast track reactions, become a reaction, there's special roles on my Discord server, and you have access to all sorts of bonus content, like my Vocal Anatomy 101 series, where you learn how your voice works, my wee rants, outtakes, there's loads of stuff. So consider becoming a patron and help shape my channel. Okay, this song has had quite the resurgence recently. It's Kate Bush singing Running Up That Hill. It was a huge song back in the 80s and it is a huge song now and that's for good reason because it's a damn good song. And since it has been used on the new Stranger Things series, it has just opened itself up to a whole new audience. So we are going to go and listen to this song. I've done Wuthering Heights before, so if you want to see that, you'll find it somewhere on the internet. Um, but for now, let's go and listen to Running Up That Hill. We've had like 30 seconds, probably 20 seconds of her singing, and she has done so much vocally. It's incredible. Kate Bush is a master voice manipulator. She can push her voice into different tones, different characters, different vibes, like so easily. She can do it through a line and it changes. So some of the things she's doing here is starting with high larynx. That gives a brighter sound, a younger sound, a youthful sound, almost impish. She's also then dropping her larynx into a lower place, which gives this kind of authority, darkness, deepness, kind of a velvety kind of resonance. She's adding a little bit of twang in there to get the sound really piercing, but then she can take it off and make it nice and aspirate and airy, which is where more air passes through the vocal folds than normal. She is just doing so, so much. So let's keep going and as I find stuff, I'll isolate it and we can talk about it some more. It's you. So there we had, again, a bunch of different stuff. Now, there was a little bit of belt coming through there. That's when the cricoid cartilage kind of opens up a little bit, makes more space behind the vocal folds, and you just get a larger sound on exit of that air. It's got a deeper vibratory pattern, if you like. I think as well, she takes short, sharp breaths rather than deep ones, because if you take a deep breath, <gasps> your larynx drops. I mean, you could try it. Take the deepest breath that you can and then try and sing something. Your voice will sound really, really strange. So when she's going, we're running up that hill, we're running up that dirt, she's just keeping that short, sharp breath to keep her larynx nice and high so she maintains that bright sound. It's really, really special. <laughs> Notice what she does with her jaw at the ends of most of her phrases here. She's just letting it go a little bit loose. La. It gives you this kind of swimmy kind of resonance. It's not oh, and like operatic with a real drop jaw. It's just like she's let it going loose. Ah. It gives that 
character to that sound it's really hard to explain but it's just gives a kind of a cookie kind of unique quality if you like and she's combining that with quite pronounced vowels in other places her oohs are really ooey <laughs> yeah nice technical term sam her oohs are through quite like a pursed sound so it's very very pronounced her e's are really really bright and spread um so then to go from ooh -ee -a, you get that real change in kind of flow it's really good She's also got a really good way of drawing you in and then pushing you back with her voice. So she does that by taking off the twang and going into that really soft, gentle place. Almost kind of whispery, but not whispery because whisper doesn't have any tone. And it's also really bad for you, don't whisper too much. But like an aspirate, soft, ghostly kind of sound. That draws you in to kind of lean into what she's saying. And then she smacks in with that twang and projects with something that's like closer to a belt. I don't think it is, but it's closer to a belt, which is perceived as really, really loud. So you're like, whoa, then you kind of have to keep doing this. Lean in, lean out, lean in, lean out. It's really, really good way to keep your audience interested in what you're doing. <laughs> This whole staging is immaculate as well. The purples, greens, pinks. Listen to that. That is going high larynx to low larynx and back up again. So you get this like brightness and it moves into this dark place and then it comes back out into the light. I mean, if we're really taking the parallels between Stranger Things and this song, it really speaks to it. I think that's why it works so well. I'm not going to spoil the show. Go and watch it. But you'll see all of this kind of vocal matches the whole premise of the show of like, turning things into like places that wouldn't naturally sit and then kind of feeling like you have no idea which way's up or which way's down or everything's the upside down, you know what I'm saying? Not a lot of people can do singing like this and it not come off as just really, really weird. Um, I know that some people think that Kate Bush's voice is quite strange, but I think she blends it so well together that it's just absolutely seamless. She's fantastic. That was a low larynx with a little bit of twang on it, almost in the realm of operatic kind of sound. And then she took the twang off and let it go airy. Running up that hill, running up that hill. Hear the difference in intent behind that sound. One is really swelling and pushed and the other one kind of dissipates out like a mist. Like she's so, so good. No. 
I love the way that she enunciates as well. Everything's like super, super clear. Or it's quite muddy. There's no real in between. Like she's either like driving that message home or she's adding a bit of mystery onto that by kind of making the words just a little bit harder to kind of make out. I, I love her. I'm calling shenanigans here, okay, because you're not going to get that clarity of sound having a microphone that far away from you with three voices and a studio audience and everything else that's going on. You're just not going to get that clarity of sound, especially not in 1985. Uh, but <laughs> we'll just let that slide. Uh, we'll just let that slide. Oh, it's the end of the song. Why do I always do that? Why? Literally, I always pause a song just before it ends. It's like my superpower. What a rubbish superpower. That was fantastic. I mean, I could go on all day about the stuff that she does. There was like vibrato from tilting her thyroid cartilage that we didn't talk about. There was so many different things, um, but we can just, you know, wait till the next series of Stranger Things and the next um, song of hers that they attach to it. <laughs> also, the vibes from this song are completely current with what's going on just now. Like the resurgence of the 80s sound is so exciting because that is like I love 80s music so I'm very happy about that so I hope you liked that reaction if you did please give it a like and a thumbs up down below and if you want to see more from me hit subscribe ring the bell and anytime I have new content you will be the first to know so I guess all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for joining me and how are we gonna buy this one huh? so I guess all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for joining me and um Go and watch another vid, it's in a nice playlist, but like and comment on this first. <laughs> uh, that's what we're doing, that's it, bye!